Well, I want to thank you all so much for um, taking time out of your busy schedules to be here this evening or this afternoon. Um, my name is Kathleen Barnhart. I am the project manager for this joint land use study. I'm with Kitsap County's Department of Community Development. And um, just wanted to take a little time right now to introduce some of the folks we have in the room today. Um, we have uh, Larry Keaton is the director of Department of Community Development, Kitsap County. Um, and we have the uh, captain from the uh, Naval Base Kitsap commanding officer. And we have a few uh, uh, city council members in the room as well. So I wanted to give a few moments to these folks to say a few words if they'd like. Larry? Well, <clears throat> welcome everybody, and we do have a couple other electeds. We have uh, Mr. Mike Sullivan and Mr. Dino Davis are both city councilmen. I serve with them, and I, I just want to say that I'm, I'm looking forward to this project. Um, it's, uh, it's great to have uh, this communication between the Navy and our uh, local jurisdictions. I know it's very important to our city uh, to have this dialogue. Uh, personally, I did spend a lot of time over the last 10 days um, going to the different uh, doorsteps, uh, perimeter of the shipyard fence in my district, um, and inviting them to this meeting. And I, I just think it's important to have this, this open dialogue. I appreciate um, all the work we're getting ready to do. And um, I'm going to turn it over to the uh, next speaker, which will be Captain Zwofer. Yep. Okay, so uh, I'd like to start off by thanking everybody for joining us today. Um, you know, it, it's obvious that uh, your interest and involvement in this project, it, it's really appreciated with your turnout today, um, and it really shows, I think, everybody's commitment to the community. I'd also like to thank uh, Kitsap County for sp sponsoring the joint land use study and administering the grant from the Department of Defense and for all of their coordination efforts. Um, you know, the participation of the other local jurisdictions and the tribes, including Jefferson County and the city of Bremerton, is greatly appreciated. The cooperation that you see between the Navy and our local communities is vital to national defense and to ensuring the long-term sustainability of the mission at Naval Base Kitsap and also at Naval Magazine Indian Island. And it's helpful not only to the Navy, but it'll assist the local governments with their future land use planning. Economically speaking, um, all of us in Kitsap are aware of the major impact the Navy has in our community with approximately 35,000 military personnel, Department of Defense civilians, and contractors working on the base. Um, and there's probably about an additional 25,000 military re retirees in the county as well. So really, why is the joint land use study so important? Well, throughout the United States, there are many examples of incompatible land use planning and development causing mission curtailment, operational delays, and even base closures. And we want to avoid those issues here. Naval Base Kitsap initiated the joint land use study nomination process so that local governments would have the opportunity to receive grant funding for local planning efforts in support of long-term compatibility with the military. And the Department of Defense Ec Office of Economic Adjustment awarded the grant to the local governments so that now we can begin this important work. So I hope this session will answer questions that you have on the process and clarify how the initiative will work, because um, I'm really confident that by working together, we can develop a process, information, and results that will work for the Navy and for the community. Thank you. I'll get to do it. I'm, as they said, I'm Larry Keene. I'm the Director of Community Development. I'm speaking for Charlotte Garrido, the Chair of the County Commissioners. Right now, she's in the, mid, in the midst of budget preparation and hearings. But uh, the Captain said it right, and so did uh, the, the Council members. We're required by state law to look at the land use between the Navy or the military installations and the, the local jurisdictions. And it's required by the state legislature under the Growth Management Act. And incompatible uses are problematic. I've lived with incompatible uses in my military career, and I watched what happened with a large installation, and you had neighbors who kept getting closer and closer and closer, and we had deer on our installation, and they kept eating the roses of the neighbors, and they wanted the federal government to build a fence around the installation. Today they do, but to build a fence to keep the deer out of private property. But the encroachment's a big issue. In Kitsap County, it's even more important. Not only is it in the city of Bremerton, but it's also in the Hood Canal. 
There's an operational, you know, as we all know, Bangor is our largest industrial complex, and there's a lot of issues related to it, but it's an important industrial complex, not only for the county, but also for the nation, nation security. So we're excited about this opportunity, and when the county commissioners were asked to do the sponsorship for it, they said not only, you know, yes, we said yes without any qual uh, qualms and qual uh, qualification. So today is a good opportunity to find out what it's about, and we're going to turn it over to Makers, I believe, next, and they're going to give you what we've learned so far. The effort's not new. We've been working at it for some time, and there's already been some research and information developed. And this is the time for the public to put their input into this as well, and it's critical because i got to say, if you don't participate now and you wait until after the plan is done, it's too late. So this will be one of many. So this time we turn it over to Markers. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Larry. My name is Bob Bankford with Makers Architecture. We're the lead consultant working with the county and, and the Navy and all the cities on the project, and we'll do introductions in a minute. I just wanted to say something about the, we're gonna do about a half hour presentation, uh, a little bit about what is a joint land use study, uh, a little bit of an overview about the project and some of the, a little bit more about the boards uh, around you. Uh, a little bit about the planning context and the issues and um, then we're gonna go back and have an, uh, the rest of the meeting be just a similar open house, be able to uh, ask any questions or answer any questions. And also we have uh, an online survey that we'll tell you about. And of course you see these uh, dot exercises on the boards. So with that, we, have, we also have some project partners, but first I wanted to have the consultant team members. Uh, there's quite a few of us, so I'm gonna have each of those uh, introduce themselves, starting with. Just so you'll know who we are in case you have questions, Julie Basick, work with Bob at Makers. Andy. Andy <laughs> Great, great, and with that, we don't have that many folks here, so we, we held another meeting like this up in, uh, in Chimicum, up near uh, Naval Magazine, Indian Island, and what we did there is just have all the uh, participants in the crowd introduce who they were and where they're from. Um, so if we can maybe do that and start up here, we're gonna, Julie's gonna pass around. Is this working? Yeah, so why are you, what's your name and where are you from and what brought you to this meeting? I'm Paul Steinberg. I live on uh, Shine Road, just across the Hood Canal Bridge. And I'm extremely concerned about the pit to pier development. Uh, I thought we had it stopped, but it looks like it's a hydra headed monster that keeps coming back. I'm Jan Wold. I also live on Shine Road, and we also have property in Paul's Bow and are concerned about environmental issues, salmon strains, and so forth. And we're also really concerned about making sure that the bases we have stay in a position where they're safe and they've got some area around them that's not just completely built right up to the edge. Hi, I'm, <clears throat> hi again, I'm Greg Wheeler, president of the Bremen City Council, representing District 4. I live about six blocks away from the, the shipyard fence. And I have, I'm an employee of the Puget Sound Naval Shipyard and been thankful for that career, but I'm here representing uh, folks uh, in that district, District 4, so thank you. Jane Warden, uh, City of Keyport. I'm the president of the community club there. And uh, we're, we're just here to find out what's going on and then we will take the online survey. And uh, we have very good relationships with our neighbors and I live three blocks away, and every morning I get the 8 o'clock signal, hey, you know, it's uh, good morning, America. <laughs> I'm <clears throat> Chell Martin. I'm the public works director for the city of Bremerton, also a downtown resident. I live in the uh, condos uh, downtown, so a very near uh, neighbor to the, the base. I love that base. Uh, the fence itself, we're talking about the fence, inside, outside the fence. The fence is beautiful. I know that was a big Milcon project itself, um, so uh, I really enjoy uh, living here in Bremerton, and I think the, uh, the, that base uh, really adds to the you know, tremendous ambiance of the city. 
I'm Allison Satter. I'm with the City of Bremerton. I am the project manager on the City of Bremerton side, supporting Kitsap County. So if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact me. Uh, our office is open Monday through Thursday, 8 to 5. Come see me or give me a call. And grew up in Bremerton, so yeah, I'm used to the, the sound and everything at 8 a.m. Love it. Okay, here we go. Hi, I'm Chris Waldwillig. I'm a resident of Bremerton pretty much my whole life. Also, I'm the Washington State Department of Fish and Wildlife Area Habitat Biologist for Kitsap County. Um, so again, kind of an echoing theme here. My parents all worked at the base and grandparents and uncles. So, um, But yeah, I'm, I'm here to help answer any questions that the project uh, consultant team may have, or I guess if anyone else has questions, I'll do my best. Uh, Adam Brockus, uh, I live in Minette. Uh, I'm also on the uh, Ferry Advisory Council for uh, Bremerton Run. And uh, I also, like uh, Greg Wheel over there, work in the shipyard. Uh, so, but tonight I'm representing myself. Thank you. Uh, Tom Zolfer, I'm the commanding officer at Naval Base Kitsap. Um, I'm here because I think this study is extremely important, not only to the installation, but also to the surrounding community. Sylvia Clapman, Naval Base Kitsap Public Affairs. Um, I kind of like the Navy, too. <laughs> I'm Marie Vila. I am a resident of Bremerton, District 4, and my backyard has a U.S. government fence right along Gregory Way, and I enjoy the heightened security that I get in my neighborhood. It's a good neighbor, but I have heard rumors about um, perimeter buffer zones and things like that, which is a pretty major concern to me. Um, moved to Bremerton 10 years ago, and we've been rehabbing our house. We live on a street of really beautiful historic homes um, that really need to be preserved. So a better perimeter fence would be great, <laughs> but not my half of the street. So <laughs> um, There's a few other concerns I have. Um, I work for the city of Bremerton as well, community development, and I see issues of parking and housing that could be um, you know, work together as a team to, you know, mitigate some of the impacts that the Navy has and just emphasize some of the great benefits the Navy brings to our community but allows our community to also grow its economic base in its downtown core as well. Hi there, I'm Andrea Spencer. I'm the Director of Community Development for the City of Bremerton, and I'm here because I'm very interested in taking basically the outcomes of the survey and integrating it in our comprehensive plan update, which we're just undertaking right now. So we're very interested in the findings, and we'll be integrating that. And if anybody's here from the city and is interested in our comp plan update process, um, go to bremerton2035.com. We have a whole website and documents out there, and we'll have links there to anything, findings and studies that come out of the joint land use study. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Dino Davis, Bremerton City Council for District 5, which means uh, the fence and Charleston Gate is a part of my district. I'm one of the few uh, city councilmen in America that actually have aircraft carriers in his district, which is pretty cool. Greg is another. but uh, So yes, the Navy is an incredibly important uh, partner in the vitality of Bremerton as well as our nation and I'm very proud to have them as a partner. Um, I look forward to working more closely with them as we move forward towards a more multimodal uh, transportation package for the entire city and that will definitely have effects on the way their workforce ingresses and egresses. So I look forward to the meeting. Mike Sullivan, Bremerton City Council, uh, District 1, and also a member of the Board of Kitsap Transit. I'm just here today to maintain my knowledge level of what's going on with this. Uh, John Larson, I'm a resident of the City of Bremerton. My main focus is on the relationship between Bremerton and the Shipyard and Navy Base. Hi, I'm Lynn Wall. I'm the Community Planning Liaison for Naval Base Kitsap. I work for Captain Zwolfer as his liaison to the local government. So pretty much on a daily basis, we're working with your local jurisdictions and transportation planning and land use issues. And so this joint land use is a huge part of that. I am the project manager for this for the Navy. So we're really looking forward to the um, issues that are identified and the, the topics that you all bring forward. So thank you very much for coming out. John Zimmerman, I 
I have the same job Lynn does, but I represent Commander Yusnusis for Naval Magazine Indian Island. I'm Kelly Lambert. I'm a planner with the city of Bremerton, and I'm interested in this through for my work as well as the fact that I'm a resident at, in Greg's district. I'm Larry Keaton. I'm the director of community development. I think I already said why I'm interested in this. So. I'm Kathy Cahoon, just coming to see what's up. I live in Silverdale, work for the Central Kitsap School District, so I'm obviously affected by uh, Navy. Michael Maddox, I'm in the Navy. I retire next year, and I'm going to be living here. So I came to learn about the area. Ed Frieder, Kitsap Sun, just covering the event. Natalie Bryson, president of the Central Kitsap Community Council. And I live in Silverdale, one mile south on the Hood Canal from the base. Thank you. My name is Danielle Schaffner. I work upstairs in the Kitsap Public Health District, and we're really here to assist and offer health information and help its integration into this study. I'm Yolanda Fong. I'm also with the Health District, and personally, I live in Port Orchard, so this is interesting as well to learn about this process as a resident of Kitsap. Thank you, everybody, so much for coming. Uh, perhaps I'll say a little bit about uh, MAKERS. Is again, we're the lead firm helping with the project. We're a group of community planners. Um, the firm has also done a, a, quite a bit of military facility planning. Um, and personally for myself, I grew up next to Seal Beach Naval Weapons Depot and, and real close to Los Alamitos uh, Naval Air Station. So, But in any case, this project, uh, what is a joint land use study? Joint land use study is a cooperative land use planning effort, um, which is between the local governments and the military. It was initiated based on interest from the local community and uh, proactively planning for this, and also with the nomination from the Department of Defense. So it's funded by the Department of Defense uh, Economic Adjustment. So oh, this isn't the first one of these studies. Over 100 of these completed in the last 20 years alone. In fact, uh, simultaneously, the, let me turn this other thing on. Simultaneously, there's a uh, similar project just starting with Joint Base Lewis McCord. So the goals of this project are to undertake a cooperative and proactive planning effort that encourages compatibility. Uh, between the military installation and the Navy itself, reducing, minimi minimizing development conflicts um, and operational impacts. So the goals of the project, again, uh, Andrea mentioned that, uh, that the city of Bremerton is starting their comprehensive plan. Um, well, all, not only that, but Kitsap County is doing the same thing. Again, we held a uh, meeting uh, last week up in Jefferson County. They are undertaking their comprehensive plan. So these comprehensive plans are the, their 20-year plan for the future, looking at how, uh, as population grows and things change, how do we plan for that? So this is an opportunity for uh, the outcome of this study is to be able to integrate recommendations and ideas into that comprehensive plan. So the timing is really good. Uh, the other thing is the, the goal, uh, one of the goals of this is to fulfill a requirement of the Growth Management Act, which is the state's planning law, uh, and one of the provisions there said it is that land use development incompatible with military installations is not allowed. So we hope that we can help comply with that. So the outcomes, again, is, is, a, is a policy framework um, to support healthy economy, environment, and a community that sustains the Navy's mission, also to obviously ensure um, safety, health, and welfare of the community, as well as uh, recommended implementation actions. So these aren't going to be certain actions for the most part. They're going to be kind of policies and recommendations that go into, again, the city's comprehensive plan. Ultimately, there may be uh, zoning is something that the cities and the counties do. So there may be things that come out of this. 
that either preserve existing zoning or just provide recommendations for zonings just so that they promote compatibility between the communities and the Navy installations. Uh, some other potential actions are interlocal coordination agreements, as well as uh, conf conservation and environmental initiatives, and there could be other things as well. So the study area of this includes uh, Jefferson, Kitsap, and Mason County, all surrounding the military installations. It also includes the um, supply routes, for instance, the uh, railroad uh, that goes between Shelton and, and here in Bremerton and also Kitsap. Um, also, there's a truck route that heads to uh, Manchester Fuel Depot, which I'll talk about in a minute. What it excludes, though, is the Whidbey installations. So what it does include is Naval Magazine Indian Island. In fact, Julie's going to talk in a minute here and give you an overview of the, the specific installations that are involved here. Uh, the other thing it is it includes the uh, area along Hood Canal and Daybob Bay, which is the Navy's underwater uh, operating ranges. Uh, so the project timeline, we've started uh, a few months ago, and up to this point, we've, uh, we've undertaken interviews with the cities and the counties and the Navy, the port districts, uh, tribes, uh, to begin to look at what are some potential issues here that we need to address in the near and the long term. We've done uh, installation tours with the Navy and also with uh, county and city uh, partners. And uh, as part of this, we've be uh, again begun to preliminary uh, look at what are some of the init initial issues. And that's what we're going to present. And that's what you see on the uh, boards around here. Um, the next steps in this project after this are going to be conflict and compatibility analysis over the next six months or so. And then we'll be beginning to draft, draft up resolution strategies on all of these. Uh, and by about May of 2015, we'll, what we're looking at is a potential for a public meeting where we'll present the draft plan. So hopefully we'll see many of you again. So with that, I'm going to have Julie talk a little bit about the installations. Thank you, Bob. So um, Bob mentioned our firm um, is a unique small planning firm in Seattle. We do a lot of community planning for cities and counties. Um, Bob leads up that side of the office, and I've done an, a number of those plans as well. And then we do a lot of um, federal facility planning, so many, many um, installations, Navy bases, Coast Guard, et cetera. We help them figure out how to um, best do their job. It's like a little city inside the fence line, um, and we help do planning there. The really amazing thing about a JLIS, and the um, reason I'm so excited to be involved in this project is, when do you get the opportunity to work across jurisdictions in such a big regional area? You know, cities and counties do planning within their own boundaries all the time, and there's some regional organizations and um, big picture issues around environmental issues or transportation, but this is really a chance to look at this whole region and say, okay, how do we um, work together to advocate for better transportation, better environmental protection, et cetera? So pretty exciting. Okay, my role though um, is to give a really quick overview of the naval installations themselves. You guys, um, many of you are living this. This is not gonna be news, so I'm gonna go pretty fast and turn it back over to Bob to um, give you an overview of the issues. Naval Magazine Indian Island, up there in Jefferson County. Closest major community is Port Townsend, but it's near the Port Hadlock, Irondale um, area as well, and right adjacent to Maristona Island. So Naval Magazine Indian Island, that um, they store, load, and unload conventional weapons. So when ships or subs are headed out, they stop um, and get loaded with weapons with that big blue crane that's out there that many of you have probably seen. And then they go on about their business. When they come back into our area, they do the same. So they offload any conventional weapons there, and then they come into port. Um, beautiful site, if you've ever had the pleasure of being on it. Very nice, um, very limited developed. There's about 150 people out there. It's about 2,700 acres. Naval Base Kitsap, on the other hand, 
a little more complex. In fact, I believe it's um, the most complex naval base in, in the nation. So um, each of the individual major bases are um, significant in their own right, and then you put them all together, and then you set them in the geography that we have here, and what you get is a very complicated um, series of operations that all need to work together. So um, there's five major installations that make up Naval Base Kitsap over 1,100 acres, so you got Bremerton, Bangor, Keyport, then you got Manchester, Jackson Park, and the Naval Hospital. Um, over 34,000, if you count military, civilian, and contractors, and just a minor economic impact, over four billion with a B, just a little bit important to our state. So hitting the high points one by one, I feel like you guys could do um, the Bremerton overview better than me, so I won't um, tell you what you don't know, but you know, there's the shipyard, there's the home port, really unique, special asset, um, especially the um, Nimitz-class carrier dry dock and the shipyard capable of repairing nuclear-powered vessels. So very unique, very hard to replace, been around a long time, you know, Great history here. 11 submarines home ported at Bangor. That waterfront is a very special asset um, for the military. One of two strategic weapons facilities in the US. So also fairly unique, very difficult to replace. And then headquarters of the Commander Navy Region Northwest is also at Bangor. Keyport, you guys probably already all know and very familiar with Keyport. Really interesting installation. Another one that's um, very lovely when you're out there. Um, beautiful place to be stationed or to work. They do rdt and &E, so research, development, training, and engineering. And they are very um, dependent. Their work is really those underwater ranges in Hood Canal and Daybot Bay are really critical um, for the stuff they're doing. Those ranges are also really important for several of the tenant commands on uh, the sub-base banger as well. So that, that part of the asset that most the average person may not ever be aware of because it's underwater, really critical piece um, to what the Navy is doing out here. Manchester, that's another one not everybody knows about. Works exactly like Indian Island except for fuel. So big amount of fuel tanks, all the fuel in the region that supports the Navy bases and other uh, forces come in there. So when the boats are going out, they fuel up off Manchester. When they're coming back, uh, they offload. Truck route connection is a big deal out to Manchester. So all that fuel gets there via truck. It has to you know, be safe on the roads that are shared with all those communities. Jackson Park, it's about 870 family housing units. Those have, um, are now being developed by a private, uh, excuse me, managed and operated by a private venture. And then a large naval hospital in Bremerton as well. So if I made any mistakes, I know you guys would know. So um, you can come tell me where I screwed up. And then obviously, if you have any specific questions about any of the military bases, there are plenty of people here, including the captain, um, that you can ask. So outside of the outside of the fence line, we're going to be closely examining the planning context, including the land use designations, population, and economics for all the communities surrounding the installations. So uh, up at MBK Banger, obviously you have Polsbo close by. You can see I'm just going to run through a couple of these maps real quick, but these are the the land use designations for uh, the city of Polsbo and the area, the urban growth areas. Uh, of course, Bremerton here, and uh, Allison and Andrea can answer any questions there, but we'll be, again, looking closely at the zoning and the other land use contextual issues. Uh, Julie just mentioned Manchester, so in the uh, Manchester Village community, just to south of that, we've identified the uh, truck route that travels through the community. Also, again, uh, last week we were up at uh, Naval Magazine Indian Island uh, at uh, the Port Hadlock, Irondale, UGA, urban growth area, and uh, Chimicum, just south of Port Townsend. Um, and as part of the planning context, the population, obviously there's, there's growth, so we're looking at what the, uh, the growth is. Also, the uh, households per square mile, the, the obviously density, 
is an issue. Um, so this map just simply illustrates where the more intensive uh, households are. Obviously, Bremerton and the urban growth areas are the darker colors there. And uh, as the area grows, so this just simply shows the population projections for each of the counties, Kitsap, Mason, and Jefferson. Uh, this slide, I know it looks pretty complicated, but uh, what it intends to just uh, talk about is the economic footprint of the military. Julie talked about this a little bit, uh, but what it's, what it's saying here is essentially you have your uh, military personnel, uh, you have uh, civilian employees, and you have contractors. Each of those have incomes, wages, that, that are then spent on housing, uh, retail, shopping that goes out into the community, and then that revenue becomes other jobs and wages, so essentially that fuels the economy tremendously uh, in this area. Um, and also, um, again, community attributes, uh, Mark Goodman, who's back there, uh, helped put together these maps here, looking at the uh, employment, um, so what these, the map on the left indicates is that uh, high percentage of uh, the employment of Kitsap County is right here in Bremerton around the uh, shipyard. Uh, the map on the left talks about forecasted employment uh, over the next 20 years. And again, those posters are in the back. You can ask uh, Mark and Eric any more details about those. Um, another thing here, this is we talked earlier about um, the total number of people employed or, or active on the bases. What this bullet point here says that out of 16,500 federal jobs in the county, that 14,000 of those are civilian uh, workers at uh, Naval Base Kitsap. So that doesn't include the active military uh, or the contractors. That's just the uh, civilians employed. A lot, a lot of people in other words. So now I'm just going to run through some of the preliminary issues, and again, most of you have had a chance to go around and look at some of the boards here, and again, these are based on the stakeholder interviews that we have. This is just a preliminary list. We imagine there might be other issues here, and we'd like to hear from you uh, about these and, and also talk about the details of some of these. So I'm just going to run through some of these real quick. Uh, this is simply a list. I'll just keep going here. So uh, some of these we've clustered into multiple issues like communication and coordination are obvious things that need to be important. And they become almost more important for like with the shipyard in Bremerton here who we have a high concentration of people and uses all right next to each other. So that communications is particularly uh, critical. Um, uh, focus areas, government to government coordination to address any development proposals, for instance, on the, on the city side, any land use changes within the Navy's area of influence. Uh, also, on the other side, uh, public notice and outreach related to changes in military or shipyard operations as the, the impact to changes that happen on the base have a tremendous impact off the base to the communities. On water and shoreline activities are, are some other things that we've talked about a little bit. So naturally there's a conflicts that can occur between Navy operation and the diverse range of activities that do occur on the uh, region's waterways. So some of the issues that we've talked about so far, recreational boating and, and fishing activities, tribal treaty rights, and again we're, we've talked to a few of the tribes, we need to talk to more of them still. Also, uh, industrial and commercial activities can have an impact on installation operations, um, aquacultural, uh, marine culture. Also, seaplane activities have an impact on some of the uh, installation activities as well. Uh, this is kind of a catch-all for a number of different things. Uh, perimeter safety, security, and compatibility. And again, a lot of things going on right here around Bremerton because of the concentration of people and activity. So naturally, there is, a, there is a potential for compatibility conflicts is a quick, easy statement. Some focus areas that we'll look at are things like uh, light glare, noise impacts on neighbors between 
activities on the installations and, and neighbors next door. Uh, also, that there are uh, there are structures. Sometimes the fence line in some areas of the Navy is actually set back from the Navy property, and there's been in some cases where there are private structures that have been built been built on the Navy-owned setback. So that's one issue in some areas. Uh, also, things like building height next to uh, the Navy installation sometimes where they can view into sensitive areas is an issue that warrants uh, discussion, compatibility, and also naturally just general development intensity around uh, the perimeters of the bases. Naturally, here you have downtown, so you're going to have a lot of density and activity, so it depends on what, what area you're in. Uh, cultural, natural, resource protections. Uh, I think in this issue, in this area, the ju jurisdictions, the Navy, and the neighbors all have a shared interest in protecting cultural and natural resources here. Uh, so the focus areas, shoreline, natural habitat, critical areas, also tribal archaeological sites, and uh, an interest in preserving the forest and other resource lands. Transportation is a big issue. Things like parking, and particularly, um, uh, you think we can, we all, most of the Navy and the communities rely on this interconnected system of highways, streets, and uh, you know, they, not only they carry people and goods across the region, and obviously the Navy relies on it for its supplies. So some of the areas that we've already talked about, we had a had a big meeting here uh, over a month ago talking about some of the issues, for instance, uh, associated with the shipyard in the city of Bremerton. So State Route 3 and 304, Charleston Boulevard corridors. We talked about parking in the community, particularly around the downtown here, uh, associated with the shipyard activities. Um, another issue we've talked about, even with Mason County, was with the railroad corridor heading down to Shelton there and interest in, in use of that activity, but there's also an interest in preserving that asset on the Navy side. Hood Canal and Portage Canal bridges, obviously everyone recognizes the importance of those facilities and we like to keep those. Uh, up at Indian Island in Manchester, the uh, supply routes, as Julie mentioned, very important. Also the, uh, the airports, Jefferson County and even the local airport here. Uh, another collection of issues are, that are tremendous important are housing, infrastructure, public services, and fiscal impacts related to Navy installations. Uh, and again, the Navy's connected to uh, all aspects of the local community, particularly these features. So the need to have coordinate, coordination to address large scale projects. We talked again at a meeting we had with the city of uh, Bremerton here was to talk about coordination on things like utilities, stormwater, uh, sewer, because these things go from the shipyard into the community and serve both. Uh, also planning for housings and school for military personnel uh, as the changes that occur within the fence line have a huge impact again on schools. So we hope to talk more uh, with folks about that. And also uh, uh, an emerging retired population continues to grow and there's issues to take care of uh, involving that. So um, again, uh, I mentioned a little bit about the schedule here. Uh, what I did want to say, I'm about done, but we've developed an online survey. In fact, some of you have seen the, we have little cards here that have uh, links to the survey and they include a lot of the same questions that you see with the uh, dot exercise here. And hopefully it's a way that we're trying to understand uh, what the impacts are and what the issues are. So um, if you're able to go on, in fact, uh, we have a uh, laptop over here that Andy can help you with. If you'd like to prepare and, and conduct the survey and do it there, he can help you with that. Or uh, again, we have all these boards here. We've tried to identify all the various issues and, and try to have you place dots if, these, if you feel that these issues have any impacts, if the impacts are acceptable or unacceptable, please let us know. We also have uh, post-it notes, or you can simply just write any comments that you have on the, uh, the boards themselves. So with that, uh, again, I think we have until, 
another half an hour here. So we'll be here uh, to answer any questions and help you out in any way possible. And did we want to say anything else? We're going to, in terms of the future meetings, I think we have all your names and contact information. So we'll be trying to spread the word on any of the future meetings that we have here. So again, thank you for coming. And again, we're going to stick around and hopefully you will to answer your questions. So thank you. <laughs>